Oh, okay, we are on the screen already. <laughs> Hi, Ronald. Hello, how are you? I'm fine. How so? We met uh here. Finally. <laughs> it's my pleasure. Yeah. So please, uh, let me open this session first. Okay. Go on. Okay. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. <laughs> Welcome to this geothermal forum online event. Uh, so my name is Hilaria Stantika Mayandari Sudarto. I'm the coordinator of uh, geothermal and geomedical research unit of the um, National Research and Innovation Agency in Indonesia. So Donald, once again, it's a real pleasure to welcome you to this afternoon session. And we have got, uh, I think, a paper or journal, fantastic journal written by you which will be uh, presenting for us. And before we uh, proceed, I would like to actually introduce you to all of the audience here. Uh, Donald Kobare, whom I know uh, since 2011, I'm oh, sorry, 2018 maybe. Uh, please uh, committee, Uh, is being recorded and your microphone for the participants will be turned off throughout the session so you will be aware of that and you will have chance to ask questions in the Q&A after the presentation uh, maybe you can submit uh, already uh, with your uh, questions using the chat button or simply raise your hands later we will do our best to address uh, as many as uh, audience questions as possible to answer by Donald, <laughs> but we may not get to uh, answer them all uh, in the time available. So let, let us see the condition. Maybe uh, that's the opening for me as a moderator for today. And I'm offering the session to you, Donald. Okay, thank you very much for your great introduction. Maybe so far, I will share the slides. I hope everyone is already see it. Clear, Donald, please continue. Is it visible? Yes, it is. 
and my voice is quite clear. Very clear. <laughs> uh, for for most, I would like to take this uh, rostrum to thanks and perceive my gratitude to Dr. Rios and as well as uh, the administration of uh, Jothal Master Program Institute Technology Bandung, the Bandung Institute of Technology, and as well as my gratitude to all uh, organizing committee, you did a great job for preparation of this event. And I'm very delightful again to come back home because Bandung with the Technology Master Program is my home and come back to share the knowledge pertaining uh, in geothermal uh, context is my happiness as well. So for today, I will take you on one of my work, and this is just part of my work that was been conducted in the tank pan Pelau. So today's talk, it will be covered almost on the geochemical investigations to elucidate, to elucidate fluid origin, subsurface processes, and recharge for the geothermal conception modeling on the Tagban Pelau. As you almost know, Tagban Pelau has been already done, many uh, research has been done there, and still there is many contradictions. But for most of the trainers, for those who like to learn more, and those uh, geothermal enthusiasts, they can go through uh, this paper in detail. But for today, I will just take you to some of the important aspects on this title. So on today's talk, I will take you through the introduction party, and as well as I'm going to cover the regional settings of this particular area of geothermal prospects, as well as I will going to take you through on the location of the area with its geological context. Then I'm going to reach on the applied methodology. I will discuss on the results that it has already investigated. And lastly, I will going to conceptualize my data set results and conclude on my findings. For a quick start, mostly uh, in the world, geothermal systems are categorized into different types based on the settings and as well as based on the its systems, whether it's magmatic or whether it's a sedimentary or whether it's a combination of magmatic hydrothermal or it's only hydrothermal systems. But in Indonesia, it's quite uh, different because the uh, uh, systems are typical of convective volcan-hosted geothermal systems. And one of these systems is the Tankban Pelau, which is in the high relief terrain. Within the volcanic setting, there is many volcanic features which are associated as volcanic eruption happens. One of which could be domes, caldera, mars, and more many features, including craters. And from geothermal point of view, caldelas, uh, as you know, like in Taconepelau, there is a very huge Sunda caldera. And within the caldera, there is many geological conceptualization or hypothesis. Within the caldera, the caldera itself can be at the heat source, or within the caldera, it can be recharge, same applies, it can be as well as discharge. But how, when do caldera can be uh, in form of discharge or can be in form of recharge or can be in form of heat source? All of these is depending on the settings. For example, if the center of the caldera, it has been uphold by volcano or young magmatic source. So they probably the central part where there is dome, it could be the heat source. 
and the wall or the flank of the caldera can act as a recharging of these particular systems. So it is believed the huge Sunda caldera that it is within the tank band Pelau, it act as one of the modification of the hydrology of this particular area. Same applies the chemistry because there is many volcanic activities which is going on. And we know also Tangban Pelau is still an active volcano. But Derimon in 2019 hypothesized like Lembang Falls in the southern western part of the Tangban Pelau that it has been believed to be the recharging of these systems. He came out with something different like this Lembang Falls. It is not recharging, but it acts as a groundwater flow barrier within this particular area. And uh, some other came out with the conceptualization of these particular sites or prospects. Saputra came out and conclude that there is two geothermal systems in these prospects. While Oxton, 2000, 2015, he came out to views like it's only single system with the outflow in different direction, northern and southern parts. As in other parts of Tangban Pelau, such as Kawadomas, there is many manifestations ranging from ebullient pools, and some of them there is many fumaroles around this particular area. So, as well as uh, from other uh, contexts or from other researchers, together, Saputra and the Suryantili added on the effect of volcano and laying toward the affection of this discharge. I mean, the chemical content within these discharges. But Atin later on, uh, Lysentry, he came out to un unveil the existence of sedimentary log beneath the Limbang Falls. And hence, all of these are debates of this particular area. Due to understanding the evolution of these volcanic settings, it needs a very huge understanding of chemical characterization of the manifestation of this particular area. As in Nic Nicholson proposed as well, uh, mixing or sometimes uh, flow, it could be different and the manifestation within the surface, it could be uh, giving an insight what it has been happening in the subsurface. So to characterize manifestations within the sub sub surface, usually it can reveal the origin of those uh, fluids. They can come out to the flow direction, and sometimes we can come out understanding the context of mixings and different subsurface process, including the water rock interactions. And through a uh, prediction of uh, saturation indexes, we can predict the potential of currents of scaling. As you know, in most geothermal systems, they have also these problems. So geochemistry, it's a very uh, crucial tool to help or aid on these things. And sometimes the variation of trans element as well, including lithium, boron, rubidium, chromium in liquid phase, it can help more on the fluid evolution or legions. Sometimes the gas phase as well as, for example, if you correct the gas manifestations, fumalors or steam vents or carbonate uh, splings, most of them uh, are reached in vapor and it can aid in the source origin of those gases. In different ways, stable isotope is very important, especially to trace or to understand the recharge. Not only the recharge source, but sometimes it helps a lot to understand 
what is the zone of recharge and what has been happening in the subsurface. Because when um, recharging occurs or metallic fluid percolating to the subsurface, during the equilibration or metallic water rock interaction, usually deuterium uh, content, it's not much affected. Rather, oxygen it's more or highly affected due to these processes. This is caused mostly due to mineral content which is available in the subsurface. As you know, most minerals, they have high oxygen minerals and it contributes a lot in uh, fractionation of these delta oxygens. So for all these, my investigation, all these investigations, it will come out to unveil the general evaluation of the geothermal fluid in that particular area and come out to understand its origins or where its origin, where does it come from, what it has been going on through its ascending to the surface and as well as to bring those contexts to the recharge and as well as to update the conceptual model of these prospects. You all understand like worldwide, we normally know like there is many areas that has been affected by tectonic settings. And worldwide, the most affected tectonic area is the ring of fire. Indonesia, it is one among those areas or localities that is highly affected by tectonic settings or ring of fire. And usually it is due to what is known as a transform convergent or sometimes we known as a destructive boundaries or sometimes it can be a convergent uh, or uh, uh, it can be uh, spreading apart, divergent boundaries. But this is quite different in my research locations. This, it has been caused by the corrosion where uh, the Indian Australian plates, it has been corrided with the Eurasian continental plates. And the indo australian plate has been subducted to the northern sided overlying by this Eurasian plate. And this, it creates a very huge orogenic mountain belt all the way from the Sumatra to Java. Mind you, uh, the research location, which is in the West Java, as well as it caused, or it created the East to West mountain orogenic. And the Takban Pelau is one of those orogenic mountains that has been affected by the subduction of this Sunda arc. So my research locations, the Tank Pan Perau, uh, we all know that is in the northern side of the Bandung cities, 30 kilometers. Mm -hmm. It has the history of 30 times eruptions. Uh, back uh, 40,750 uh, years. And the last eruption, it was in 2019, whereby the Baru crater was being formed within the huge uh, Ratu crater. And this is, as you can see, there is many renewments and some kind of manifestation where uh, the data set was being corrected. As I told you before, geologically, this area as well has been affected due to uh, orogenic or tectonic events, whereby uh, the structural system as well as it has been formed due to collision of Indo-Australian uh, erosion plate. And after that, three episodic eruptions it has been happened, which influenced the geology and lineaments of this particular area. The first uh, orogenic 
or episode of volcanic, it will the early pre-Sunda volcanics, uh, which comprises of Sunda volcanics, mostly covered in the western side and north uh, eastern side of the area. And we older, normally it's overlie this, the tertiary older uh, sediments in this particular study area. The second episode of eruption, it will the seen eruptions, which comprises the Buranglang volcanics, as you can see in somehow dark khaki colorations, and the Sunda volcanics. The Sunda volcanics, it consists of the Sunda andesites, which is almost covering the central party and toward the northern parts, and the Sunda pyroclastic uh, shown in kind of white colorations. The last or oh, the third episodic of uh, erosion of or, or eruption, it was the Tangpan Pelau volcanics. This consists of two units, the Tangpan Pelau andesites, and as well as the Tangpan Pelau pyrocrastic. Tangpan Pelau andesite is covered almost in the northwestern side of this study area, whereas Tangpan, Tangpan Pelau pyrocrastics covered mostly uh, the central part, or huge part at uh, the last episodic of erosions. Mostly lineaments, as you can see, it has been investigated more or less by Saputra and as well as Nasutians, which reveals most of these manifestation is structurally controlled. The cross section of this particular area has been created from the northern eastern side to the southeastern sides. And as you can see, we have many manifestations, including Batugede and Maribaya, which is structurally controlled. Not on this, because sometimes, uh, uh, based on the cross-section, some I didn't cover, but as I shown in the geological uh, map, uh, most of them are aligned within those structures. And geologically, uh, it has been revealed, the tertiary statements is the oldest units, which has been followed by the Tangban Perau at the youngest unit in this area. As I told you before, a team investigated within the Lembang Fault beneath there is more or less sedimentary origin rocks. And hence it was been included here to update this conceptual uh, or uh, section from Nasutians and Saputra as well. The field survey for sampling were conducted to correct geothermal fluid manifestations, naturally occurring in this particular area. And most of these uh, manifestations, it has been occurred, it's warm spring, fumaroles, and many, many others. Not only this, but some of the rain uh, water or precipitation has been already corrected. Uh, to come out on establishment of the local meteoric water line in the bundle. After correction of field surveys, analytical lab work was being already conducted, and it was been conducted to come out with cationic uh, composition uh, understanding or measurements. And compact flex metrium iron chromatography has been used. While a silica, it has been uh, analyzed using JASCO V7330 spectrometer. Inductible cooled plasma mass spectrometry was being used for uh, understanding or knowing the trace and rare earth elements. Same applied stable isotope analyzer was being used for stable analysis of delta oxygen and deuterium. For details, in a quick uh, data acquisition, as I told you before, it was being acquired from both water and gas samples. As announced earlier or uh, elucidated to you, iron chromatography has been performed to come out with 
major cations and some of the anion spectrophotometry for silica, inductive body plasma for trace elements and rare earth elements within those manifestations. Titimetry was being used in order to come out with carbonate as one of the major anion of uh, geothermal water. Stable isotope analyzer, it was being used for deuterium as well as oxygen. And moreover, gas chromatography and weight chemical analysis was being used to know the chemical gas constituents of those manifestations. Different processing and chemical interpretation as well as was being employed after data uh, analyzations. And major cation and anion was being employed just to quantify or to know the validity of the data analysis and as well as uh, survey. As you know, maximum or less up to five, it's acceptable value as the iron balance. And this one also was being used after getting those major cation and anion together. This one also has been used for geothermometry, which has been already conducted in the tank panel, but I didn't cover it much in my today's talk. But the rare earth element together with some of the content from uh, ion chromatography as geoindicator ge analysis, or in, in the course, on, they call it physical chemical uh, indicators, was being used. Some of them, it was very important for coming out with the maps and understanding the origin processes and as well as common source reservoir. But some of indicator maps also, all these physical chemical conditions, it was very helpful in understanding most of the upflow, boiling and permeable zone within particular uh, area. On the other sides, Weighted average method was being used to come out in establishing the bandung meteoric water lines within that particular area. A part of that, we have been matched with uh, the gloves to come out on quantifications of the elevation zone. But the recharge mechanism of this particular area, how does those fluid has been um, investigated? speculatively uh, geological informations like topography structures and lithologies, it has been just aided here to come out on understanding these mechanisms. The conceptual model as the final goals of that particular area, it was been supported by some of the data set from gravity, which was been a freer and we just corrected tailings and uh, Boga anomaly map has been uh, used using band pass fittings to come out with residual and regional maps of the heat source of the particular area and aiding on the finalization of the conceptual model of the tank band pillow. So that is just a quick on the investigation or the flow charts on this study. So for a quick start on the hydrochemical features on this uh, area. Uh, Piper diagrams, which is the very common used diagrams for identifying most of the types and most of the origin of these fluids within the area was being used. And it has been concluded or investigated there is three kinds of composition of the fluids in this particular area. One of which is carbonate, chromium, sodium, potassium, water, and diluted chromium, carbonate, potassium, magnesium types, water. And all of these uh, could be originated into different mechanisms. The sulfate chloride, uh, water, especially in Kancha, and as well as Chiata, it has been originated from different mechanisms. One of it, it could be uh, typically when uh, chloride uh, water and sulfate water mixing at variable depth are the water ascending to the surface. 
but sometimes it could be formed due to near surface discharge and oxidation of uh, hydrogen sulfide gas in chloride water. Another possibility of formation of this dilute chloride sulfate water, it could be due to condensation of magmatic vapor at depth. And on the other hand, uh, if uh, those uh, chloride fluids pass into sulfate bearing sequences or rocks, it can also cause to the formation of sulfate chloride uh, water. But uh, for carbonate dilute uh, chloride water, usually it's just formed by the dilution of chloride due to groundwater, or it could be due to long uh, lateral flow. In Batugate, it was somehow uh, an ambiguous because it has high chloride content comparing to its uh, discharging or issuing temperature. Hence, it was being concluded this could be flow directly from the reservoir, or sometimes it could be due to the water that has been uh, included, it has been formed from sedimentary formation water, which it has high chloride content has been uh, investigated by Kara and Hano. The source of rare earth elements, it was been as well as investigated and spider web diagrams of the rare thermal concentration of the Tangpanapela hot spring and water has been uh, drawn. The first one, it is the normalized chondrite uh, diagrams and the second one is the post arcane Australian shells normalized patterns. This is almost more or varied for most of the terrain, which has uh, sedimentary more uh, formations, especially to some of the northern sides of the Tangman Pelau. It's purposely to use this one to understanding on how those values change. But for most of uh, volcanic terrains, these uh, normalized conduct values, it's uh, usually promised. As you can see, there is enrichment of right earth elements comparing to mid earth element and heavy earth element, such as uh, rutetium and ranthanum. Uh, for this case, uh, we can say like, there is uh, a normal trending of these geothermal fluids as proposed from Wang and as well as Anderson. But as you can see, there is a very huge gap between uh, the manifestation from Kawadomas, Domas Crater, Chiata, Kancha, and the other sides from Batukapur, Batugede, Chilasa, Chilachas, and Chimangu. This, it could be probably induced by what is known as adsorption of those rare earth elements within the sedimentary rock horizons. As you know, that the mobility of those rare earth elements, mm -hmm. how does it uh, mobile or how does it evolve? Usually it depending on the, the uh, how does it come. If there is like poor spaces within those sedimentary, it's very easy to be adsorbed and uh, the evolution toward the manifestation, it could be somehow not efficiently. And sometimes the origin of this water, um, it has been investigated by using what is known as geoindicator of lower and as well as all light and the heavy um, rare earth elements. Most of these uh, light rare earth elements indicators, the ratio ranging from 0 0.05 to 6.35, whereas the mid of European and Samariums, their concentration ranging from 0 0.015 to 2.65, with the respective eutabium and eunobium, where it marks the heavy rare earth elements, it's also ranging from 0 0.395 to 3.73, respectively. So from this context and with a uh, reference to jacks and whites, the length of those uh, manifestations with the value of 1 to 21.5, especially the chiata, kancha, as you can see the uh, values, mm -hmm. and kawadomas. Most of these they have within these ranges. 
and are typically originated from anesthetic origin rather than from forensic or any other. And as well as when you see on their uh, European Samarian values, which is ranging within this value as proposed by Jex, is typical known as uh, or seldom happen in Ireland Ag subduction zones. As you know, like in Takman Pelau, as well as due to Ag or Sunda Ag subductions, it could be probably uh, the creation of those kind of anomalies or values, as I've been told before. Apart from that, guess constituents was being analyzed. And these are some of the results. Some of the data sets uh, has been adapted from uh, the Technology Research and Development Center Geological Disaster, BPPTKG. And some uh, have been uh, only in Domas crater was being analyzed. And as you can see, the dominant gas constituents in this particular area, it is carbon dioxide with the values ranging up to 95.56 more uh, condensable gas. As you can see on the more particular ratios as well as its vividly or aid a lot when it comes to investigate some of the formations upflow and the origin as the context of his research as it's concerning. And most of them, normally uh, the more values or ratios of nitrogen gas, argon, helium and argon is mostly very important. Oh, it's very aid on understanding those particular uh, concepts. So they commonly use uh, 10 diagram of nitrogen, helium and argon, semi prize nitrogen, carbon dioxide, and argon, those are just working core calendar to come out on understanding the origin or the source of those gases from the subsurface. As we can see, the lower values of nitrogen and the argon ratio up to 38, yeah? you can come and check on here. Mm -hmm. Their values mostly has been revealed in some of the manifestations, such as in Domas craters, Rato crater. Mm -hmm. And most of them, they are in meteoric source regions. But in some of the areas, the ratios of helium to argon, mm -hmm. it's somehow promising very high, mm -hmm. indicating their values to be as well as 0 0.1, which the values which is more than this usually inter or associate with the log reaching, or usually it could be from volcanic mantle delivery logs. On the other hand, the delta values of oxygen and deuterium as well, it was being investigated. As you can see, we have the different type of manifestations and as well as some of them has been corrected from rainwater from different elevations to reduce uh, the particular effect of minimizations of those uh, or put in the effect of elevations into a, a validity or uh, into cartridges of those isotopes. And hence, most of those uh, values, as you can see from rainwater and as well as from geothermal fluids, it is a very uh, important to investigate the origin of water rock interaction sometimes. And the enrichment of delta oxygens, it has been investigated more or less in Domas uh, crater. Mm. And as well as the depleted values, it has been shown much in Chicole earlier mm. as one of the representatives stable isotope content of the rainwater in my study area. Delta diagrams of oxygen and deuterium, as well as it was being developed, where as well as the local meteoric water line established by Andrew Sato and Suna in 2013, 
it was been included. And for the new one, it shows there is a negative shift. Mm -hmm. Probably why uh, there is many kind of uh, antagonism there. As you know, like uh, during this sampling, uh, it has been conducted during rain season. And during rain season, usually uh, there is many mixing. Uh, as usual, the oxygen values, it could be somehow depleted. And hence, this could be one of the reasons why there is a negative shift comparing to the local meteoric quarter line established by M. Santo and Suranawan. The another evaporation lines, uh, it's been already created, but with one of the main assumption, like in Indonesia, usually the evaporation line, the gradient ranges from four to six. And hence, to minimize that uh, kind of effect, six was being used to create the line. And as you can see, most of the manifestation is brought closely to these both lines, evaporation including meteoric water lines, indicating the main source of geothermal reservoir within the tank pan Peru geothermal prospect could be also as well as main source is uh, rain water or meteoric water. On the other end, to understanding the subsurface process, what it has been already going on. The major cation of the fluid, such as chlorium and sodium, usually is very important. So establishing those uh, linear diagram, uh, putting uh, regression uh, analysis into effects, as you can see, the regression interdetermination coefficient, it's very valid and it's not that much promising. The different linear relationship of this particular area or different manifestation, as you can see, in each kind of relations, especially chloride and the other constituents, it can be caused by what is known as deep uh, geothermal fluid when it's subjected to mixing. So mixing proportion sometimes this can influence variation of these uh, gradients or determination coefficient as well as. And sometimes, you know, like in Tank Tank Pelawa as well as, there is many uh, gradients or there is many variations of uh, slopes. Sometimes there is high slopes, sometimes there is low slopes. <laughs> so all of them together, it's max like the source all the variations of these uh, in the cartrix of these uh, radiations, it can be also probably due to different infiltration of those fluids. Apart from that, to come out on validating on the mixing issues, deuterium, uh, oxygen, delta, temperature with delta and as well as chlorine with delta is very important. As you know, like delta, usually it increase as more fluids it equilibrate within the subsurface. And it will decrease as more mixing it happens. And with the determination lines, most of the lines it protein down, indicating still there is mixing within particular area where the battle gate is floating somehow above these lines and the domus crater, mm -hmm. indicating all of these, they uh, somehow are uh, steam heated vents, while this one does not much affected by the dilution. On the other end, the geoindicator map as well as of sodium, potassium, or cations, it's very important sometimes to come out to understanding the zone of dilutions. And most of them, it shows low values, indicating the central part prospects, it's highly diluted. And some parts uh, like Chilachas and the Batu Kapoles. While uh, in Domas Crater, there is a very high, uh, sorry, there is a very high uh, determination coefficient here. As you can see, 
the value of deuterium is somehow high with different to temperature. And sometimes the chloride values as well as it's indifferent with the oxygens. Why? So uh, from the field investigation as well as, and according to Trusdell proposed, if the area is somehow affected or it has distribution, lateral manifestation varies with temperature and uh, the type, this area could be uh, subjected to multiple separation uh, processes. This is the same happens to the Domas crater, where there is a very huge distribution of manifestation which is clustered nearly to each other. As most of here, I think you have been already visited the area, and there is many distribution of manifestation, like fumaroles, there is steaming ground, warm pools, durian pools, all of these, it has been concluded, it could be due to multiple separation process with um, tracking to true data has been suggested. On the other end, to identify on the subsurface processes, one of the uh, common, uh, as well as very uh, used diagram of hand therapy and chlorite established by Funia, it has been as, as well uh, used. As you can see, there is different in the cartridge in dilutions. But to get a, as one of the, somehow uh, less affected by dilutions. To create these diagrams, one assumption has been made, like all of these fluids is from the central part and flowing to other sides, northern and southern parts. While in uh, Kawadomas still, uh, it does not putting in the zone of mixing, means like this is a steam heated uh, groundwater around that particular manifestations. And there is some of the several suborning springs in the area diagnosed from the indicator of silica and potassium magnesiums, which is usually putting within the beta chrysobilite. If there is equilibration of those uh, particular uh, context within the beta chrysobilite is the very good signatures of suboiling springs. But how can you identify it uh, on these diagrams? It's not very crucial, but you have to go to the field and make sure whether there is some immature silica uh, encrustations. And this is the same happens in some of the area where there is immature silica ink encrustations or silica deposits in some area of Batugede and some in uh, Kancha. If you go there, you might see them uh, spreading apart. Are they uh, source or are they indication of suboiling springs? Some of the, that one can be indicated by barbering. If you, there is some kind of barbering within those manifestation, it can also tell you like there is some uh, suboiling infestation uh, around the subsurface going on. To differentiate on those uh, clusters in the tank by the geothermal systems, geoindicator as well as proposed by Lopez was being undertaken, whereby chlorine and boron as the conservatives was being used. As you can see, this one is pro giving us more or less non-lineation uh, manifestations protein away from each other, indicating probably their source is not the same. Uh, probably uh, these particular, the Chimangu could be more closely uh, with the Maribaya, but still like just maybe with the uh, Batuka pools, but Kancha, Chiata, they are not related and protein away from non-lineations uh, end members. Mm. So as well as for cationic, as well as it's also promising to differentiate or to come out on the common source reservoir fruits. But this as well as it give us like the reservoir could be more than uh, uh, four. Mm. It means like some of them could be related like Chimango and Maribaya, giving a lineation uh, in the countries, but some of them, they are not related 
two renations. But Patrick Eden uh, giving also the same renation trends. Some of them, they are not uh, renally trended to show uh, N members and the following um, affected uh, uh, dilutions. So uh, apart from that, as well as to come out on understanding where it could be permeable zone, where it could be uh, the area of boiling, or sometimes uh, the cationic uh, physical chemical indicators is also promising to investigate that. And the sodium, potassium, sodium uh, value has been used. And the values, which is less than uh, 15, like sodium, potassium, usually it gives us the promising area of uh, permeable. But apart from that, it shows like lateral flows. And you can see this creating uh, indicator maps, it gives us like most of the area, it's permeable, but with their flow in different directions uh, from uh, creating maps. Mm -hmm. Some of them, they're flowing in different directions, following the photography as well as some of them could be flowing in each directions. But uh, in but together it's not uh, very useful to use this uh, sodium potassium, but rather uh, cationic geoindicator has been used and it agrees much more, giving us the high uh, values to indicate the reservoir or permeable zone on this particular area. To come out and to establish how, where does recharge occurs in this particular prospect, the weighted average method has been taken into consideration. And as well as the elevation, as I told you, it was being used, especially while in, uh, taking manifestation into different uh, elevations. It's very important to know that. So to calculate in calculation of weighted average uh, values, it gives us different values, nine negative and negative 55 for deuterium. So on plotting those values to the delta uh, diagram, it gives us these uh, values very closely to the intersection lines of the meteoric water rock interactions, and as well as evaporation lines with local meteoric water lines, as you can see, just flows directly to the intersection of these lines, giving an indication like our weighted average method, weighted average effect and the values that has been calculated is a promising for deducing the elevation of recharge. And hence, for deuterium, uh, for oxygen delta with elevations, it was being deduced. Then it reads using this equation of determination coefficient, uh, the elevation was be determined to be 850 meter above sea level. Whereas deuteriums with elevation with determination coefficients, as you can see with the equations, as well as has been calculated and it come out with the values almost 750. So these all together, it give us the range of elevations for recharge in Takwana Perahu could be values from 750 to 850. But mind you here, we didn't consider the effects of positive shift. And hence to take that into consideration, the uh, equation proposed by Tian was being used. And the recharge elevation, it usually determines from the most depleted values of oxygen ratio from geothermal water. And the values was 8.52. Where as well as this is the most depleted oxygen isotope of the local meteoric water line and the bottom meteoric water line was being used and the value was 14.513. The gradient as well is being used, but this gradient is not for geothermal or meteoric water, but rather it's for bundle meteoric water line. 
and the gradients, as you can see, and uh, from previous uh, diagrams, uh, it's giving us to eight, which one was been also utilized uh, per mils kilometers that was been used for calculations. This height, it's usually the height of the elevation of the local meteoric water sampling point where uh, the gradient falls. And hence, putting all those values into these uh, equations, it gives us the elevations of recharge is almost 1,708 meter above sea level. For delineation of the recharge zones and taking into consideration geological units, it's usually dominantly covered. So you cannot give like this could be maybe probably the zone of recharge without in putting on consideration the geological units. Mm -hmm. The surface geological units, it's also giving an influence. And as you can see, the coverage of most of the central parts, uh, it's uh, most pyrocrustic pyro rocks, such as uh, Tangban Perau pyrocrustic and the Sunda pyrocrustics. Some of them, they are Sunda andesites. So both of these two give easy infiltration of those meteoric water uh, recharge of this particular area. And hence, for that particular, uh, to know whether, how did uh, uh, meteoric water in effect, in infiltrate, this is also another study. So somebody who is interested, I can do it to add more on, on understanding of those recharge many mechanism. But uh, there is in this mechanism, there is three categories. There is um, dialect recharge and indirect recharge. Dialect recharge, usually it's uh, the added precipitation reaching to the subsurface is usually through uh, infiltration in excess of soil moisture. Mm -hmm. But indirect recharge could be through beds of surface uh, so, such as rivers. Mm -hmm. if most of the areas bed of surfaces are uh, infiltrated by levers, this could be indirect. But when we have another type of indirect recharge known as localized recharge. And localized recharge, usually it takes place uh, as an intermediate uh, indirect means of recharge, whereby uh, water, it can infiltrate to the subsurface by joints, folds, or depression. Sometimes uh, river stream or river lakes. And if you see in our zone of recharge, we have some folds, we have some rivers, which can be acting, uh, and sometimes the caldera. Uh, these all of them are some of the aids are the localized recharge in this particular area. So based on the conclusions uh, of this recharge area, it can be by means of dialect or localized means as proposed by Lena or uh, the viewers. Due to geomorphic diversifications of the Tangpan Pelau, 3D surface geological map was been established as well as to know where is exactly the spot of recharge or where is the recharge a dominantly occurs. As remind you, we have been already calculated our elevation of recharge, which has been ranged from 700 to 850. And other was been within uh, 100, 1,378, which is within this color. So we put the elevation effects uh, based on the color, and it shows most of this, especially central part of the Nakon Pelau to the southern part, the recharge, it's in the walls of the Cardella. Mm -hmm. And as well as it could be in the slope, Oh, locally, it could be in the base of Fort Mountains, the Dagwan Pelau. And this agree as well as to the morphology of this area. The central party, it could be somehow kind of dome. And if it's the dome, maybe the central part is the source. And within the Cardella, it could be a recharge. But on the central to the northern side of the Batugede, Patukapur, and Chilachas, um, the other. Uh, 
one, it was being already uh, created. And it shows some spots of recharge in the Franks base of the mountains and as well as the foot of these mountains. Together, to put these on uh, nodes, the elevations of our recharge is more or less in the values as I told you. And it shows concurrently that it could be by means of direct and indirect. But to assist, to aid putting into effect uh, the conceptual model, some of the data was being used as well. Because you cannot update the conceptual model without knowing exactly where is your heat source. And using uh, gravity satellite data acquired in this date, free provided by the University of California, San Diego, or sometimes it's known as uh, Topex websites, you can get this free gravity data there. And I use those uh, data uh, together to process or to come out on understanding where it could be the location of the ethos. First of all, the, uh, this data, it's uh, free of air anomaly. And hence, what we have to do is to process what is uh, to correct the terrain and as well as the booger. So after performing those, we produce the booger uh, anomaly map, shows like there is regional heat source in the northern, southern parts and the central parts having different values. But somehow regional, it's still not somehow different with this one. It's still giving the same indication like the heat source could be plutonic or sometimes it could be by volcanic. And when we come to residue, uh, residue anomaly enhancement, by burn pass frittling, it gives us indication of rockalite heat source. And as you can see, we might have different uh, zones. There is a very uh, contrasting of values, high to low here. Maybe the Rimbang fault, it could be one of the source that giving this contrast of values here, indicating there is different heat source here and around the Kancha, while the central part, the Tangban Perau, especially with these values, which is showing bluish colorations, it gives us an indication the heat source. First of all, you can reason why maybe this central party is somehow um, showing these bluish colorations. Uh, because uh, usually in the volcanic talents, we expect high anomaly and not low. This is Probably it's been because after eruption, uh, material that fill this uh, crater or caldera, it could be those pyroclastic. And sometimes those structures or uh, geodynamic issues, it can give as well as a uh, raw anomaly in this central part. Sometimes when the, as well as the water can be in field or the water from the magma, it can come out uh, filling those uh, uh, pyrocrast materials give more to low anomaly in the central part. But in the northern side, southern side, it's still giving us high anomaly, like the heat source in the northern side, it's due to protonic, southern can be protonic, but still, and but together maybe uh, there is some ambiguity, maybe it could be protonic, or maybe the protonic is still made deeper or maybe it's lower down, that's why it's still intervened uh, heat source. But in Chiata as well as, as you can see here, it has as well as its different localized heat source. So based on this localized heat source, we can come to conclude like the heat source in this uh, area, it varies from volcanic to protonic. For conceptualizations, based on what has been discovered and what has been processed, the northern eastern side 
to the southeastern side cross section of this geological map was been created to come out on giving this conceptual model of the tank ban pillow. And as you can see from the aiding values, uh, the northern southern part is cooling pluton, or the heat source could be by upwelling uh, plutons, while the central part it's due to volcanic eruptions. And from the discussions, uh, the magmatic input as all you know, like there is some of the gases, which is usually important in input of the solids, uh, where as it goes up, it can mix mm, with the rocks and water within the area, stored a bit as reservoir, depending on the directions. And before uh, settling, as well as, especially in the central part, as I told you, uh, where if there is maybe water or whatever decays in the pressure, there is dilutions, sometimes it can reduce the pressure. And especially in the central part, metal boiling, it can be in your car, having many kind of uh, steaming ground and fumaroles on this area, indicating like below there, there is metal boiling, or there is condensations uh, for especially sulfidic manifestation on the area. The calculation of recharge as well as it was not being forgotten. It was being included in the conceptual modeling. And as you can see, those zones, it was shown to be in the sides of Maribaya bit based on the cross sections. And some of them, as you can see, the recharge zone has been calculated to be in the caldera wall. But the caldera wall, soon the caldera wall could be more deeper, separating one system and another. As, as well as the Rembang uh, fault, it can as well as separate the southern more party and as you go to the northern part. The at the groundwater flow barrier proposed by Del Delimon. On the other end as well as another conceptual modeling was being created. But before I go to the other conceptual modeling, I just want to remind you, Saputra investigated the existence of two geothermal systems. But mind you, it was contrary to oxygen, like suggested the single systems and the flow in the northern and southern sides. But putting all uh, discipline into context, into aspects, including geology, geochemistry, and geophysics. Geology, uh, like especially structures, it gives us an indication like there is boundaries of system between one and another. From one system to another, it can be separated by the crater caldera rim, and the caldera rim could be one of the single systems because of its evolution as well as it's different with the other systems. The evolution of Batuget as well as is different from the central and as well as the other parts, as has been uh, interpreted before. And hence, why we call it system, before you say systems, we, each system must have its element to comprise a geothermal system, recharge, discharge, and as well as recharge. And for these investigations, we can come uh, into and in saying like, why we have to say this? Because all the components, it has been included. It is there. So and hence it's possible to call uh, independent in the systems if all the element of geothermal system has been included. On the other hand, northern eastern side to the southern western sides of East Tankan Pelau, as well as the cross section was being created, still in the central part, the process is the same. Whereby after heating uh, and bringing solutes from the magma, such as uh, hydrogen fluoride gases, sulfide, chloride, hydrogen fluoride, as it go interact with the wall rock, 
it give some other components. Uh -huh. These components are usually interacted with the wall rock or fluid water movement or water interaction to create a reservoir. And as you come to the surface, the pressure decreasing, the fluid O, as well as when you mix with the groundwater flow barriers, as I said before, the pressure of this fluid can decrease, causing multiple boilings, especially the central part, creating many vapor zones, especially in the domus crater and steaming grounds. On the other hand, the chiata and cancer, as well as it has its uh, independent recharge um, zones with discharge area and as well as uh, the components of elements of geothermal systems. For the conclusions, water and gas samples from manifestation reveals much more uh, these, it can be from meteoric water interactions or regions, but in the central part uh, and some minor parts like Kancha and Chiata, it shows there is a bit of magmatic influx or meteoric water interactions. Uh, there is a boring processes we have been investigated in some areas, which has been in, uh, influenced by what is known as um, dilution or mixing with shallow uh, groundwater or local groundwater. And we come out to uh, investigate the recharge of this area. It is varies from 700 to 1,378,000 uh, meter above sea level as the uh, area of local recharge. Regional recharge, somebody else can do to come out with the regional recharge of the area as the influences of the system mm, of the area. But as said before, uh, the district uh, more than five reservoirs has been investigated and probably, and we come out to investigate more than uh, four geothermal systems, it could be uh, in this Dangban Pelau has been uh, speak or is, has been established by the other uh, scholars. Mark uh, this, I would like to say like, this is the end of my presentation for today. And for those enthusiastic of geothermists, uh, the paper is available in Geothermics that is already published. So for those who like to learn in, deep, in detail and understanding everything, and if you didn't follow up much with the paper, you like to understand much more better, you might have maybe a room for discussions here. And I can clarify or you can clarify as well. We're both learning. And the link has been provided here. Or if you go, you search uh, any of these authors, me, uh, Pairon Iskanda or Boninik Suryantini, you can get the paper available and you can read for adding the knowledge. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you for uh, your coordinators and thank the moderator, Dr. Rios, for the introductions. And this marks the end of my presentation. Well, Donald, uh, thanks very much for your impressive presentation because you successfully translated the journal into the presentation, which is very uh, comprehensive and clear enough. And I think uh, I'm not the only one to have been impressed by your presentation. And then uh, do we have any questions already? Because we start, we can start to open the discussion from now. <laughs> Okay, uh, from Yudipa Energy, Yuda. Donald, are you there? Yeah, I'm there. Okay, I'm lost. <laughs> uh, I'm lost uh, of your voice. Okay, in your concept of hello, model, hello, actually, hello. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can hear okay. you enough. Yeah, thank you. So, uh, Yuda from Yudipa Energy asking you about the concept of model. Uh, so you mentioned about the tertiary sediment in Bato Gede, right? Mm. And also in Madibaya area. So do you have any um, 
comments uh, about the influence of those sedimentary rocks uh, to the water chemistry of those manifestations, both in Batu Gede and uh, Maribaya. Maybe that's uh, the first question. Uh, yes, uh, if I, I think my voice is clear, right? Yeah, yeah. Sure. Thank you, you very go. much uh, for your question. Uh, Aditya Yuda Kenchana. Uh, based on the conceptual model, the tertiary sedimentary in Batugede and Maribaya areas, uh, the influence of these sedimentary rocks, water and chemist manifestation. This is usually, uh, if there is many uh, ways of understanding like there is the influence of sedimentary or not. Especially when we, I, I uh, evaluate uh, rare earth elements, as you can see, there is some of the standards. Like uh, if you come to use those uh, rare earth elements, especially lanthanum and lutetium, from volcanic settings, usually those spider web diagram, it's very trending in normal way. Left, right or right, left positive or negative. But if you come in uh, my slides, maybe I have to bring it back there. Yeah, so this is uh, quiet the one of the way to prove uh, there is an influence of sedimentary local or not. Because most of the area which is not uh, sedimentary terrains, the trends of uh, these lines, or we call it uh, rare earth elements, it has positive trends or normal trends. But if you see this down here, it's quite complicated. Uh, so giving you a crew like uh, their standard is not in the volcanic settings. So rather, it is within sedimentary. And as well as for using this one also, you can understand much the evolution of uh, sedimentary logs or manifestations with various elements. So to give out with the trends or whatever, uh, as you can see, the trend sometimes it's still, it should be normal from light to normal, but due to some complex cities, and when you calculate maybe the values of European or Syriums uh, for volcanic and as well as sedimentary, you can be able to know like this is uh, affected by sedimentary or not. But this uh, is not only for my research, but the idea of this, it has been already investigated by uh, Atini, as I saw, I said before, because he work only in the Rembang Falls, the Maribaya and the Chimangu. And uh, she came out on uh, analyzing carbonate uh, isotopes, mm -hmm. carbonate isotope and the other traces. And uh, within those uh, tracings, he came out uh, with some verification, like probably within the Rembang Falls, mm -hmm. there is some of the sedimentary uh, rocks which it can hampering those signatures or those indications of um, carbonatic kind of uh, uh, manifestation and some of, as well as uh, the values of those uh, indicators of uh, tracing or stable isotope analysis of carbon 13s and dating as well as. So he used those and he come out, uh, she came out on conclusion like uh, there is uh, those sedimentary rocks. And for me, I just put it there because uh, uh, you have to acknowledge uh, the past researchers and admit it because I didn't do much in detail on those because it was been already indicated by her. So I just put in to attribute or to add on the her context. On another way, and uh, you said, how can you choose geothermometers for estimating the reservoir temperature for each reservoir sectors in manifestation, especially in, in first by groundwater mixing? Thank you very much. In uh, geothermometer uh, selections, usually we have to choose 
the correct geothermometer based if the fluid has been equilibrated. If the fluid is not equilibrated, it has been affected by those uh, mixing or subsurface processes. What I suggest is to go with most of them like crystal bar like silica because those are crystal bar like or sometimes um uh crystal bar -like silica those it's those are silica it's not that much stable it's unstable so usually it's unstable and at low temperature so when those um if you chew that crystal bar -like silica for your uh, geothermal uh, investigations it will give you more rather promising results rather than going to solute geothermometers it you can overestimate your reservoir temperature or it can roll down your reservoir temperature so if there is any influence of those manifestations uh, subsurface uh much more equilibration of solute silica is not that much promising mm -hmm. but uh you have to go with those silica sub uh, immature silica uh, stable immature silica temperature and it can be giving you uh, more promising results i hope i answer your question okay thanks donald and i hope uh but you your question uh has been answered has been answered by uh, Donald. And then uh, we are now um, inviting Bapak Tristovic because maybe uh, he raised his hand like several moments ago. Pak Tovic, Pak Tristovic, could you directly ask Donald? Yeah, uh, thank you. Thank you, Mbak. Uh, and thank you, Donald, for your presentation. Uh, really appreciate for sharing your observation results. So yeah, my first question is that um, with the fact that you observe uh, the presence of a heavy stable isotope and um, also at some steam fans, we also observe the uh, low concentration of carbon dioxide and followed by the anomaly uh, nitrogen concentration. Um, do you think that the um, because you only show like one models uh, to to demonstrate the uh, geothermal system in Tambukan Rao? Do you consider the uh, acid vapor ecosystem uh, in Tambukan Rao? That would be my first question based on all those uh, anomaly that already elaborated before. And that will be my first questions. Uh, second question would be, um, what is the best analog field that you think to represent Tabu Pan Prahu? Um, uh, can you come up with any fields that you think of? Uh, is it Alto Peak in the Philippines or any other fields in Indonesia? Um, and then that will be the second. And then the third one, um, do you think there is a, a, a neutral fluid uh, here in the in Tabu Pan Prahu, uh, and if not, uh, what are the risks of uh, exploring this area with the fact of the anomaly from geochemical standpoint? Thank you. Okay, thank you. Part of it, uh, Donald. Did yeah, you catch thank the you. First uh, question. I okay. catch the first, but uh, the other one maybe in the third, maybe the second one. Uh, he can repeat again. Thank you very much for your questions. If I understand very well the first questions, it's uh, give me the clues, like uh, what are the things I have to consider uh, on uh, come out on differentiation of those uh, geothermal reservoirs, right? Am I uh, getting yeah. your correct, the, the, the question correct? Yeah. Yeah, yes, yes, don't know. Yeah, because in your conceptual model, you 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 exhibit a model where uh, there is a steam generated from the and also gases, magmatic gases from the uh, heat source, and then you also draw a bubbles there. Uh, it, does it mean the steam survive until that depth, and then uh, there is uh, another process where the all the steam being dissolved in the in the water and the water being neutralized and experience boiling 
So um, I'm trying to understand your model here. Like, um, so um, is it like a multiple layers of type of fluids or um, do you consider like just the steam, the vapor core itself just shooting up uh, to the crater crater and then produce paper at the top. So um, how do you accommodate those models like uh, from, yeah, from uh, your standpoint? Thank you very much. As you can see from the central part of the tank Perao, especially that crater and others, Thomas, um, this you see down here is reservoir has been indicated but it probably uh, what it's normally when the fluid is flow from the reservoir usually uh, in the reservoir there is high pressure that is very known and everybody understand so uh, as the temperature decreases to the surface oh when those are uh, fluid coming out from the reservoir following uh, structures or permeable rocks. Sometimes it's undergoing mixing or dilution, as I told you before. And dilutions, it could be within the subsurface, or sometimes it can be from the surface. But mind you, most of the manifestations, they are trending, it's coming from the subsurface. So normally the mixing, it should be, until the food mixing and the chemical compositions of the surface water and the groundwater rich in the equilibrium, to represent like uh, the surface compositions and the subsurface composition to come into equilibrium and giving out uh, the compatible compositions or concentrations, yeah, it should be have enough time against the subsurface processes, which it has been going there as I show here. This is just the zones and the predicted zone of where uh, it could be a mixing a zone. Mm -hmm. Because when the food flow from the reservoir, it should be mixing. When it mixes with the other uh, local or groundwater system, other cold groundwater system, not hot reservoir, uh, this reservoir reduces the temperature, reduces the pressure. So when the pressure reduces, uh, it's depending how, actually with the permeability of that particular area. If there is more permeable, that water has been investigated in Kawadomas, the central part, like it undergo multiple boiling. Multiple boiling, it means like, um, it, you know, there is maybe a single boiling continuous, like, and sometimes it can be going boiling and again boiling, boiling. So there is no much more time for those fluid to incubate into gas and liquid, but rather when the uh, fluid stop again, it undergo another boiling. That's why even when you see in, in the uh, Domas crater, their concentrations, uh, it's much more uh, less in chloride, giving like a uh, micro boiling, it has been indicated there uh, in some of the area. But there is a condensation, yes, of course. Why condensations? Condensation is just happen where there is a high sulfilic uh, acid in this particular area. Mm -hmm. And this condensation has been used mostly by steam heated gases. Mm -hmm. Steam heated gases, when you go even to Domas crater, it's it's viable. Uh, you can see like much high rate pressure uh, formulas giving out uh, some even immature silica uh, kind of uh, argent sulfide uh, and the pungent smells. All those kind of kind of condensation of uh, silica in near surface. Uh, so this is also accommodated here as another processes before uh, the manifestation appeared to the surface. I hope I get uh, your point. And uh, maybe I will go to the third uh, question, but you will ask again the second question I will answer you. The second question you ask about the prospective uh, area for yes. drilling uh, following these geochemical investigations. Of course, in drilling targeting, we have to utilize many aspects, not only geochemistry, 
But um, one of the ways, uh, usually it can be uh, following structures and manifestations. But uh, while dealing, first of all, you have to consider the hazard maps. Because uh, creating uh, like hazard maps in this particular, the central part almost it's organic. And this, uh, putting those high amount of project, uh, it's not that much uh, promising to me, but rather for a recommendations. Uh, we can go to some of the area away from the central part where there is um, highly volcanic to reduce that effect. Kancha is one of the promising area because uh, first of all, the temperature and as well as uh, the fluid itself, it's still promising. Though uh, some chiata as well as area is promising. Uh, so these two areas, it's still the promising area for drilling. Mm -hmm. So if I'm the, maybe the contractor you're giving me, or oh, I'm the investor, I want to invest here. I could not promise you to go to drilling maybe close to, because maybe there is temperature of reservoir here, it's maybe it's higher than others, but following the geothermal gradient, the geothermal lines, yeah, you can come here, maybe you can drill uh, somehow close to reservoir. Mind you also, the elevation of the central part is very high to reach the reservoir depth. Uh, so still, uh, we have to check the depth of uh, the reservoir from the surface to the subsurface to uh, uh, reduce those kind of stacking uh, risk of drilling uh, in general. So as much as the depth to the reservoir, as much as uh, the risk of uh, the geothermal project can be uh, hampered. So it is indispensable to go in most of the raw uh, terrains and most safe failures. Mm. And from the fluidity, equilibrity, or the quality of the fluids, as well as later on, it will be um, evaluated after drilling test. And because the fluid can be coming from the reservoir, then uh, we can discuss more when uh, we have the fluid. Uh, because I think there is one of the drilling that has been drilled in Kanchan, but it does not reach the reservoir depth due to those stacking of the drilling pipes. So still I will go with this area, but they have to choose the most location area. Uh, that is very close to the reservoir. But one of the cautions, they have to use gravity as well. So sometimes to really in uh, volcanic logs, it's sometimes very dangerous uh, comparing to other sedimentary terrains where the drilling is very easy. So it was been drilling, stacking, yeah. All of these, uh, they're choosing the site to most of the rocks, like holes, uh, very easy to drill. The area of manifestations, close to the manifestation, it's also promising for uh, drilling. So still, Kanchen and Chianta are still promising for this uh, uh, investigation based on my point of view. And the second question is, can you ask again? <laughs> okay, if I'm not mistaken, uh, Christophe asked about the uh, fields that have uh, some lands with Tanko Ben Prahu. Maybe mm -hmm. in your mind, fields that have present lands with Tanko Ben Prahu. With, um, ah, the field that has the same systems uh, with yeah. Tanko Actually, uh, <clears throat> Tanconepelau, it's a volcano hosted uh, geothermal system, volcano hosted hydrothermal. So these are volcano hydrothermal systems. So for volcano hydrothermal systems, uh, most of them, they are just in the Philippines, huh, probably. Uh, comparing to other areas in the world, yeah, Philippines, yeah, it's one of the area. But um, some of them, as well as it can be, um, there is one of the area in the, around the Andes, Brazil, mm, where the uh, 
we have that um, where Nazca plates are directly under South American plate. Also, there is some field which is somehow related to Tank and Pelau. High terrains, volcan hosted uh, geothermal fields, which is actually complex uh, terrains to figure out. So those are two of the promising area. Corrosion, high terrains, and structural uh, diversifications or genetic uh, diversification of structure. So this is just structural controlled, terrain controlled, um, volcanic controlled. So all of these uh, components is there. And the promising is those Philippines and Brazil, I think. There is one of the question I see it here. Moderator. Hello. Oh yeah, sorry. Uh, <laughs> I just unmute my voice. So thank you for the explanation. I think if Bapak Christophic still have uh, questions to be discussed, please uh, come back later. And then now we are going to the to the upcoming questions from Bapak Moyanto from Pertamina Jutama Energy. Uh, his inquiries actually um, related to the previous uh, statement from you about the compartment six different reservoir. Uh, his inquiries is about the um, data data supports. What are the the other data supports for the hypothesis yeah. you yeah. built? Actually, uh, the first hypothesis for closely associated or to come out to the common source reservoir usually is geochemistry, of course. But uh, for example, a very good example, uh, if you followed uh, Ropes or many different point of view, if the fluids originated from the same source, mm, from chloride, fluoron, boron, uh, diagram, usually they have to cluster in almost the same uh, area, right? So if like, like this one here, if they are somehow closely scattered, probably they can come from same source origin. But if you see here, there is this one, uh, cluster of Batu Kapur, Chirachas, Batu Gede in another side as well. But here also, as well as we have some part at having Kancha, Chiata, uh, and a bit Chimangu, and another area, it's Kawadomas. So all of this is giving clues like, ah, these fruits, they are not coming from the same source. So that is the one of the hypothesis of uh, differentiating this reservoir. But using the uh, aid of this, uh, one of the cationic uh, and the anionic components, as you know, chloride is one of the major anionic in the reservoir fluids. So whether it's uh, coming from the source or whatever, for example, if we, our determination of coefficients, maybe the lines, maybe I can draw right, I uh, can get some things to annotate a bit, if you don't mind. Sure, mm. please go ahead. Uh, for example, I might draw a line here. Maybe let's say this is my determination of coefficients. Sorry, okay. Donald, we can't see your drawings actually. You can <laughs> see it? Yeah. Oh, but, How about uh, everyone? Yeah, I mean, on the screen. Yeah, could I you already try again. Yeah, could you again? Okay, let me do it again. Try again, yes. How about that? Um, I'm not seeing anything moving. <laughs> <laughs> How about the committee? Uh, do you have? Oh, maybe I have to. Technical try again. Yeah. Okay, please try again. Okay. Still, How about that? still, <laughs> I don't see anything <laughs> difference <laughs> from your uh pictures. Yeah. Um. Oh, it has. Okay, someone. I can see that. Okay, you can go with that. No, no sorry. <laughs> uh, yeah, they they can see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So, for example, um, imagine maybe we have. This is our determination of coefficient. Maybe here, let's draw maybe here another one. Yeah. 
or another one here. Mm -hmm. So, uh, one of the good way to say like uh, the fluid manifestation, it's uh, originated from the same source. For example, if one is protein maybe here, another one protein here, another one maybe here, another one here, on these lines. So probably all of these, we can say it's almost the same source origin. And this is the end member. These are mixed fluids. But if you, even wherever you can put the lines uh, of determination coefficients to determine uh, the reservoir source, still these, uh, they don't come out with the regression uh, coefficients of uh, good results. Mm -hmm. This, it shows us like, it's not uh, giving uh, clues like this is the same source origin, mm -hmm. but rather it's coming from different origin because I might draw here, uh, giving different, only one line, maybe two, uh, only two, but still others, they are protein in very high. Um, and if you want to see that one, you can come here into this area, like this one here. Mm -hmm. But here, the, pro uh, the problem I didn't uh, include the chlorine and uh, this one, chlorine and boron. Mm -hmm. So if you see here, this it was determinations. So if you check it clearly, the end members here, maybe probably could be this one, but others, it's not the end members of the lines, right? So all of these, it gives you clues like, no, these reservoir fluids, all the sources, it's still not coming from the um, same source. With the aid or with the close assessment from this ternary diagram, which is commonly used uh, for decades, it has been proven. Uh, so this is just a very cool shot description like this is not from the same source. And why, how many five? Yes, you can just predict. Maybe uh, if you draw those kind of lines, I've been drawing, huh? yeah. Like this one, if you draw the lines, this is giving us like five, this one it gave us six. Huh? But here also it gave us five. So probably we have to come, not be biased. We have to say like five, yeah. Because most of them, they are start from five and above. So it could be five and above or less. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So that will be uh, answering the question from Pak Moyanto. Uh, if you don't mind Pak Moyanto, you could also uh, directly having Discussion with Donald, please. Mm -hmm. Okay, while we are waiting for Pak Moyanto, maybe we will move to the next question. Uh, Mr. or Ms. Hokobila, maybe who is not anonymous to you. <laughs> uh, the question is uh, about the uh, rock type. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Apart from rock type influence, are there any other implications of the REE's chemistry on the surface processes? Yeah, actually, uh, rare earth elements uh, chemistry, it may influence a lot uh, subsurface because like, um, apart from the origin of those, because the rare earth elements, you have to know where does the rare earth element first of all originates. The mobilization of rare earth elements, it starts directly from the logs. That's you have to understand first. All rare earth elements, it's coming from the log. So mobilizations of those rare earth elements to the water. Mind you, here I process or oh, I analyze only water, not rocks. So to, for this, as the water uh, getting into more mixing, into more heatings, uh, those rare earth elements will be mobilized from the rocks to the magma, then water. So their content actually decreases a bit mm, as it mobilizes all the way. But still, 
it will give us some signature if you interpret it correctly and the analytical analysis is passively correct. So if uh, imagine maybe you might came with Ratanite or European Samarium, you normally know like in maybe forensic rocks, the Samarium content is ranging from bra bra to bra bra or 0 0.5 to 0 0.001. In the other side, it should not be the same. When it's coming to the fluid as well as the trend, it could be somehow differ a bit closer to the rocks, but you can come out now like, yeah, this the rare earth elements from the fluids, it's this much or from magma. Or, and also this rare earth element, it varies from setting to settings. There is some of the setting it has high, some of the setting it has low, uh, and uh, some of the settings, uh, it's very uh, retro. So what is the implication of those layer element to the subsurface processes? It's just migrations. Mm -hmm. You're going to give you the, what could be the impact of those layer. Sometimes even layer elements, it can give you the model, what are the complex process. Like there is also one of the invasions uh, uh, came out, uh, Doctor. I think Doctor Helen. He came out with the uh, model to analyze these rare earth elements into migration of some of the uh, which area to which area. So sometimes the migration of rare earth elements, maybe moving from one uh, source to another locality, it also showing where it has been going on down there. Some of them could be mixing, as I told you. Some of them, uh, it can add more signatures, giving indication maybe this, there is absorption, as I saw, I told you before. If maybe the migration is coming from the source, passing to sedimentary rock, of course, the, what the content you get, the, the composition, it could be somehow very low. And it could not be the same as with the origin. So there is many uh, subsurface process uh, using this rare earth element chemistry uh, analysis, but those are just some of the, to the context of uh, geothermal. But rare earth element also, it can be used to interpret the, the, the origin of this fluid, whether they are coming from the same source or different source. Sometimes the rare earth element, it can be interpreted to show the heat source, magma, protonic, or non-protonic. Okay. Depends on the, uh, does it depends on the um, normalized materials? Sorry, let me put uh, the charger because my oh, okay. laptop could be out of charge here. Yes, come out with the question, Dr. Rios. <laughs> yeah, I mean, um, regarding to your last statement about the REE, uh, do you think the REE. Hello? Yeah. Can you hear me clearly? Hello? Hello? Hello, Dr. Lewis? Yeah. Did you hear me? Hello? I'm still here. <laughs> Hello? Hello. Uh, how about the committee? Uh, do you? Hear me now, the committee. Yes, Ms. Rios. Okay, thank Hello. you. Yeah, Donald. Hello. Um, maybe we we are having trouble a little with uh, Donald. Okay, maybe the committee could uh, contact him by typing messages or something. Okay. Hello, hello. Yes. It's my voice. Yes, yes. I can hear you enough, Donald. <laughs> Okay, uh, do we have any more questions for Donald today?
Okay, hello, Donald. Hello, hello. Yeah, I can hear you enough. Hello. Donald? Hello? <laughs> I can hear you. <laughs> How about you? No? Okay. Uh, fortunately, all of the questions have been answered by Donald for all participants. Uh, do we need to wait for... Hello, hello, another... hello, hello. Yeah? I don't, Donald. I don't hear you. Okay, uh, it's okay. I think the time is pushing on, yeah? Okay, Donald, uh, I also can't do the sign language, so I don't know how to reach you. <laughs> yeah. Maybe I have um, to leave and join again. Let me leave and join. Mm -hmm. How about the committee? Can someone uh, contact Donald? And... <laughs> okay. For Donald, Donald will come back. Okay, thank you. And then we are still waiting for any more questions regarding to his journal in Tango Ben Bravo. Oh, now, now I get it. Okay. Maybe we, we need to switch the position like this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so oh, actually... I just uh, need to train again. Maybe yeah. there is some question that has been raised a bit. I didn't oh. Try to... um, do we have any upcoming participants who raise the hands? <laughs> Okay, no? Okay, Donald, actually, uh, it's related to your uh, last answer about the IEE. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. Um, how do you, how do you find and, and use the suitable, uh, the most suitable uh, materials for normal extension? Because sometimes in volcanic, uh, volcanic areas, uh, it could be sedimentary or it could be both oh. volcanics and sedimentary, yeah. Yeah, that's that's why it's uh, sometimes uh, confusing when you want to come out with a conclusion which one is. The other. But the most important thing, uh, you have to know the normalization values, which is somehow will reduce those ambiguities. Um, especially if you're working in both volcanic and sedimentary together, you have to go with uh, pass uh, data to come out with the, both those uh, signatures in sedimentary. But if you're working on volcanic talents, it's better you just go to conduct normalized values. Those are just advised one for using it in those particular settings. But before you analyze uh, those data sets, uh, sometimes, you know, this rare earth element, it's not that much higher in these geothermal fluids. In rocks, yes, you might have a very high promising data sets. But when it comes to fluids, mind you, it's been already reduced a lot. And uh, as well, the values is not that much. So there is different ways we can, uh, like rubber analytical way that we have to use to get more uh, data set uh, to, into into one uh, good hand. Otherwise, you can just find like not defined, not defined, not defined. So that's a, a good way of harmonizing those uh, 
technique in the labs to get each kind of, and they also to limit uh, the determination uh, limit. Because if you put the, if you use one of the analytical ways, like ICPM, it's maybe the determination coefficients, or uh, limitation is maybe times negative 15. Yeah, some of the data set you cannot get. To get much more, to get any uh, particular uh, values of those rare element into the broad, into boards and use it, you have to choose the correct way of uh, uh, harmonizing those data preparation lab preparations and the analytical technique. And as well as yeah. after getting the data, you have to select a better way of normalizing those values depending on your settings. Yeah. Do you think we need to filter or not for the REE? Filtering, of course, uh, it has been already promising technique. But if you filter, if you filter, of course, uh, you reduce much more content of prayer elements. Yeah. But also filtering, it reduces some of the, uh, you know, there is some of the sources of uh, rare earth element from anthropogenic activities. Uh, yeah. So to reduce those kind of uh, uh, elements, yeah, we have to filter uh, a bit. But I think uh, in the case, uh, if you don't filter, maybe you might get uh, an promising results. Mm -hmm. So we have to filter to reduce this error. Okay. Okay, thanks for your insights. And then, uh, okay, Paizaki, thank you. And then uh, we still have uh, three minutes, maybe if if there is no more questions, we can use this particular time to take pictures together, shall we? Yeah. <laughs> so how about that committee? Please inform us. Okay, we will uh, take a picture. Mm -hmm. So you can open your camera and we will count from three to one. Participant, you can open your camera, please. Okay, Daniel, smile, please. <laughs> oh, you already smile. <laughs> okay. I, okay, I will come from three, two, one, please. Okay. Okay, thank you. Oh, thank you, committee. Uh, I think that's the wrap up for today's Geothermal Forum. Donald, thank you for your presence, your time, your energy uh, to put it together yeah, for us. Sure, so yeah. For, for you to assist in this moderation. Mm -hmm. I hope your journal can settle the dispute about the number of <laughs> the reservoir in the Tanku Bank. Yeah. Yeah. We but, are very. Uh, I think. Uh... It's very delighted. Still, I have many things to do there. Mm -hmm. I maybe I, after my PhD, I have to come up again. Sure, you are welcome. To do something else. But yeah. together with a, a Brie, a Brie, yeah? Hopefully. <laughs> yeah. Uh, maybe, yeah. Do, do you have some research funds that you offer for researchers? Okay, we are still uh, <laughs> a long way to go, but we can talk about that later on. <laughs> yeah, but if there is, uh, I can assist maybe mm -hmm. to be like, uh, not lead like per sale, but I joined. Sure. Joint research, okay. uh, work together with peer. Okay. And maybe we can come with good research later on yeah. to aid on these kind of yeah. LA uh, investigations. Sure. Okay, then I would uh, enjoy your summer in Japan. And then I would also thanks to all the participants and also the committee from Jetonal ITV. Uh, see you again next time in the future. <laughs> thank you very much. And thanks yeah. for everybody. Thanks for the okay. participants. Selamat siang. Selamat sore. <laughs> Selamat sore. Bye. Okay, uh, yeah. Bye. <laughs>